Okay, good morning, folks, and welcome to Morning Update. Uh, we have the futures higher this morning due to Alcoa releasing earnings after the bell yesterday, and apparently the street liked what they heard, a beat on the top and bottom line. Why is this so important? It's because the market is expensive, and really, when it comes down to the fundamentals of the market, uh, I can't find a reason why we are seeing such a strong breakout. The only thing I can assume, and purely an assumption, is that the street is betting that we're going to see multiple expansion, or that we're going to see earnings beat, and the PE of the market, the cost of buying stocks, will go down and make buying stocks more sensible. And that's really just a hope right now, but Alcoa provided a, a glimpse of hope yesterday, uh, I always go by how the stock performs the following day, and that really gives me an idea of the quality of earnings. So we'll keep an eye on Alcoa today, but it was up after hours, considerably high, about $0.36 cents after hours on a $10 stock. Pretty good move. So later on this week, we're going to have some of the money center banks, especially on Friday with Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank Corp. report earnings, and I believe we get Chase Actually, Citigroup. Citigroup as well on Friday. And then next week, we get all the big money center banks. Those who haven't reported this week will report next week. The following week, you get more of the regional banks. So we're coming into earnings season. I am not a big believer in buying individual stocks ahead of earnings because I have no control over what's going to happen in the after hours. I have no control over what's in there. Uh, earnings report and I need to be in control so what we'll do is we will look for opportunities for those shares that are at extreme overbought or at extreme oversold levels and we may trade those into earnings because usually with those types of names there's anticipation that either if in the case of extreme overbought stocks the shares will rally into earnings due to the fact that anticipation is that they're going to blow out numbers and vice versa for extreme oversold stocks but then you get the sell on the news effect and that's where we profit so those are the opportunities that we'll be looking at in the next couple of trading days so let's get to the charts okay now let's begin with a look at the VIX this is a weekly chart and I'm using a weekly chart to put into perspective historical support levels and yesterday it was only one trading day in the week so far uh, so this is Monday here even though it's a weekly chart we flashed a bullish key reversal off of historical support now why is this important it's important because the S&P 500 traded higher yesterday yet the VIX traded higher as well so we're seeing a divergence that's no, normally not supposed to happen. Now, does this mean that we're going to go running back in and shorting stocks right away? No, it doesn't. What it means is that we're going to keep an eye on the setup. Normally what you get before a big move higher in the VIX is a double bottom setup. You saw it here. We broke out, pulled back, and then we had an even greater rally. You saw it here, double bottom setup, and you saw it here. So we'll keep an eye on the VIX. Way too early to go shorting stocks for the longer term aggressively just yet. Take note of Ultimate Oscillator putting in higher lows. We're going to keep an eye on the VIX. And we'll be building on our TVIEX position at these historically low levels. That will provide us a hedge. The S&P 500 daily chart rallied yesterday closed off the highs of the day volume very very light the Dow Industrials similar price action closed off the highs of the day volume very light the transports continued to rally yesterday closed off the highs of the day we are in a trading range beware the transports if you're looking to short them if they break out above 7800 volume slightly below average IWM rallied right into resistance yesterday so what we might do for a swing trade today well actually day trade is we're gonna get a pop this morning and we'll take a look at the TZA to possibly buy it for a swing trade 
and look to get out fairly quickly because what I believe will happen is that if we blast through resistance here, we'll come back down and retest it prior to moving higher. Volume below average. The US dollar. This is a, a bit of a concern and fellow member Suzanne had a question with regard to um, BRZU and USLV. Is it too late to add more? I would, I would be careful. And the reason why is that when you're taking a look at the chart of the dollar, while you have topping action, your indicators are implying they want to move higher, seeing higher lows. That's a hawk in the background. Sorry, folks. I'm doing this outside of my by my pool. Stokes are hooking up higher. All of our indicators are saying the dollar wants to head higher. What would be the catalyst to send it through resistance right now? Earnings. If earnings begin to roll out stronger, such as what we saw out of Alcoa yesterday, that could send the dollar higher. What will that do to commodities and especially the emerging market plays? It's going to send them lower or at least put pressure on them. The banks broke out yesterday above the 50 period moving average and closed their doji star formation. Volume dropping off of a cliff though. You're seeing a rally in Deutsche Bank. Uh, how long that's going to last, not quite sure. But there's serious problems over at Deutsche Bank. And I'll keep an eye on it because as goes Deutsche Bank, I believe so goes the U.S. banking system. Because everybody has exposure to Deutsche Bank. They're that big. Oil. All right, so we're breaking out in the markets. Everybody's anticipating global growth yada 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 we're supposed to buy into that argument while i said the other day i, I stopped out of a position because uh, the short position due to the markets breaking out i don't know i don't necessarily believe with the reasons why they are breaking out they're just breaking out so if it's in anticipation of global growth oil is certainly not implying that we have global growth because it is really beginning now to fall apart and you'll remember Overlaid here in blue, I have the S&P 500. For the longest time, as went oil, so went the S&P 500. But that correlation appears now to have, at least for the short term, has broken. Here's the S&P moving higher while oil is breaking down. And if we break down below, where do we close? We're two cents away from critical support at 10.63. If we break down below 10.63, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with oil. Earnings better be pretty god darn good because something is going to have to counterbalance this move in oil. And you may be saying, you know, Bob, you know, the markets are probably pricing in the fact that lower oil is good for the consumer. Okay, I, I would buy that argument, but isn't the Federal Reserve worried about deflation? Isn't that why we are in panic mode with interest rates the way they are and we are poised to have another round of QE? And let's take a look at the weekly chart. Where has been the concern during these correlated rallies between oil and the S&P 500 and their impact on the consumer? I, I'm not buying into that argument. Because remember what this means, lower oil prices means less of a demand for energy and exploration. Remember the, one of the main reasons why coming into the new year, why the markets were going down. The junk bond market, remember, here we were coming into 2016. Who is reliant on the junk bond market by far the most? The energy and exploration names, especially the frackers. And we've had a heck of a rally back off the lows, big correlation with the S&P 500. If this begins to break down once again, then you're going to see weakness in the market and you're going to see oil probably at lower prices. So keep an eye on oil. There's a bigger picture here. There's a bigger story than simply the impact on consumers. And we're not that far away from the all-time highs on JNK, which is an ETF for junk bonds. All right, let's talk positions here. NUGT, uh, yes, we still have um, naked puts on NUGT, but the setup here, I just couldn't resist. I think that we're, we're down in the pre-market, about $3. I think that there's a good chance that we spike higher today 
Volume continues to drop, but we're holding support. Let's go to a two-hour chart. You see a breakout above 168.82. We're going considerably higher. Let's go to a weekly chart. Let's see where our next resistance level is. The next resistance level on NUGT is at $214 per share. So we see a breakout today. We're going considerably higher on NUGT. Just beware of the dollar. That's all. Just beware of that dollar. Potash, daily chart, holding support, volume light. It gave up its gains yesterday. Let's go to a two-hour chart. All right, so here's what I'm waiting for with Potash. I'm looking for Potash on this two-hour chart to stick its nose back above $16 per share, bounce around here a little while, retesting the breakout point. We will be looking to buy Potash. I hate buying stocks that are already in fuego. They've already made their moves higher. I like buying early stage stocks. It's obvious by now. It's how we got really good positions set up in USLV and UGT, etc. So Potash is one of those stocks that pays a big yield, about 6%. The street is going to become aware of it fairly soon. I don't know why they haven't really bought it up sooner, especially for a market that's in demand of yield. And we'll keep an eye on Potash because I believe that if we break out above 16, I think that we're heading to these resistance levels fairly quickly. Because the street is going to become very, very aware that the shares are breaking out, it pays a yield, and they're going to jump on board. Take note of how close we are to resistance on Potash on RSI. So the chart on a two-hour basis is looking good. So we may be adding to our position as soon as today. Platinum Metals Group retesting the lower band of support. Platinum on a monthly basis. Let's go to the spot price. Here's your spot price of Platinum. It is breaking out. I think PLG is going to break out. We're going to remain long. USLV, once again, becoming a bit extended. It made a new higher high yesterday, but it sold off the highs of the day. I can't go chasing it here. Volume's still above average. So we'll remain long, and I'll be looking to put on the ZSL trade once again as a hedge. Because on the ZSL, we are closing in on this historical support level, which I mentioned the other day. And again, this would only be a hedge, a swing trade. Let the froth come off of silver. What might cause that froth to come off of silver? Watch the U.S. dollar. If it breaks out, it'll put pressure on silver. So we're looking at a price between 25.81 and 25.91 on the ZSL, and we'll look to get long. All right, TVIX. Here's one thing I just can't stand about the TVIX. We had an update yesterday on the VIX, yet the TVIX closed down. I chalk it up to it being a trading vehicle. I also chalking it up to time decay, but it happens all too frequently and it really gets under my skin. So we are now down. We have a one handle on TVIX and this is why we buy in increments. We don't go jumping in with both feet. It gives us the luxury of shopping. Two hour chart. Let's update this. Okay, so we've updated this downtrend channel. Well, what would I want to add more to the TVIX? If we plunge down below this lower band of the declining downtrend channel, I would step in. Because you could expect a counter trend move higher. Or if we break out above this upper band of resistance on a two-hour basis and we retest that breakout point, I would look to add more. We're already seeing a breakout. Let me update this once again. All right, so we're already seeing a breakout on Ultimate Oscillator. Not my favorite indicator, but it's an observation nonetheless. No breakout yet on RSI. No breakout yet on Stokes, but I will be watching them carefully. Take a look at MACD. I don't talk about MACD often because it's a lagging indicator, but it's an interesting setup nonetheless. Double bottom setup on MACD and a higher low. Very, very shallow histogram. I'm liking TVIEX. We may be adding more TVIEX. If they spike the market, which it appears that they will spike the market today, and they take it back down below, not back down, if they take it below this lower band of support, we'll step in and we'll buy more TVIEX. So stay tuned. Uh, maybe an active day today. HYMB. We're short of HYMB. A bit concerned. We may be bull flagging out here. 
sellers moved into the close yesterday going to a two hour chart you can see here at the close on volume that was above average so you're seeing your down volume bars begin to rise relative to prior periods but if we break out we're gonna have to cover our position on HYMB BRZU all right, the caveat here again is let's keep an eye on the dollar because it has a direct impact on BRZU. Remember also that BRZU, or Brazil I should say, is a commodity country. They are very, very reliant upon commodities and oil in particular. If oil is dropping, that is not good for Brazil. So let's keep all of these things in mind before we go buying more. If we see a breakout in the dollar, we want to be a bit cautious on Brazil. I think longer term, we're in a safe space. But in the short term, we may have a better opportunity to add rather than chase the BRZU. Volume yesterday was very light. So BRZU, I still like. I wouldn't add here. What would I prefer to see? I would prefer to see strength in oil. I would prefer to see weakness in the dollar. And that would get me more bullish on BRZU. Until then, we need to wait. Because right now, while yes, the trend is up, we don't have a real serious breakout above the 109.50 level that we really need to see before the market begins to step in and really take ownership and bid it back up. Because they will, the money will flow where the momentum is. And we don't have tremendous momentum yet on BRZU. And that's it, folks. Let me get this out to you. Everybody have a profitable trading day, and I'll talk to you soon. Be well.